we do want to go uh, to our next guest. Uh, no one, in fact, has been a bigger critic of the Fed than he has been. Peter Schiff is uh, the president of Pacific Euro Capital. Euro Pacific Capital, I think, is the uh, correct there you go. title. There you go. <laughs> he joins us on the fast line. Uh, you've been short the dollar. Peter, does this uh, at all change your view, especially as we are seeing the dollar strength in the after-hour session in response to the Fed move? Oh, not at all. I mean, first of all, you're talking about a quarter of you know, 25 basis points. I mean, rates are still much, much too low. Uh, I don't think this is going to be the beginning of a significant Fed tightening. I think they're still afraid to raise interest rates to levels that are appropriate. Uh, I think they're still trying to artificially prop up the economy. I think, you know, given the, the hot CPI number that came out today, uh, maybe there's going to be a, an even hotter CPI number tomorrow. The Fed maybe felt that they had to do something, and I think this is trying to buy some time. I think it's a very cheap way of trying to pretend that they're going to get aggressive, that they're getting hawkish. But I don't. I think it's all uh, bark. I don't think there's any real bite here. And you know, if, if people are stupid enough to buy the dollar into this, uh, you know, uh, you know, in the short run, uh, you know, it, it, the dollar could strengthen a little bit. But right. I don't think there's any long-term strength here. Peter, so, you make an interesting point, and the conspiracy theorist in me. Uh, says maybe there will be a hotter than expected CPI number to follow tomorrow since the Fed <laughs> seemed to come right, out with this right. today. No, but Peter, go ahead. I mean, go okay, ahead. so you say this is a one-off and they're not being responsible. Uh, we'll take that for now. But let's say a month down the road they make a similar move. At what point do you say, you know what, I've been wrong about this Fed. They are trying to be responsible. Maybe I have to look at things differently. Well, you know, raising points, you know, in quarter-point increments and baby steps, that's, you know, that's how we got into this mess. You know, if they were really being serious, they would be raising 100, 200 basis points. Three. I mean, the, keeping rates at these levels, whether the Fed fund the discount rate is three quarters or one and a half or two, it's still much too low uh, for our economy. Interest rates need to be much, much higher. We have no savings in this country. We have much too much borrowing. The Fed is printing too much money. We have huge budget deficits. None of that is consistent with low interest rates. The Fed needs to be responsible and tough and raise interest rates, but they can't do that without bankrupting all of the financial entities that have been bailed out. Meanwhile, the Fed has got $1.5 billion worth of you know, mortgage-backed paper uh, on its balance sheet. If they raise interest rates significantly, they're going to crash the value of all that stuff. Peter, it's Karen. So do you think, I mean, I do think it's very important what the Fed does in terms of whether they continue to buy mortgages. Do you think that they will continue? And if they do stop, doesn't that really give some credence to their showing some sort of restraint? Well, they never should have bought them in the first place. That's so, real, I, you know, that's the fact that they now. stopped doesn't give them much credibility. But, you know, I think that the fact is almost all the mortgages are now, are now guaranteed by the government. So we've, we've, we've basically transferred all mortgage debt to treasuries. I mean, 96, 97 percent of all the mortgages now are backed by the government. So the Fed doesn't actually need to buy them at this point because they're all, in effect, treasuries. Although at some point they're going to have to buy them because no one will want treasuries either. Hey, Peter, but, you know, that... There's no private money that's going to go and that's going to fund mortgages because prices are too high. There's too much risk in mortgage lending. Uh, the only the only one dumb enough to lend is the U.S. government or the Fed because it's not their money. Peter, while I have you talking on treasuries, the true arbiter of this move tonight might just be the treasury market. Where do you see that market moving in the wake of this? Well, look, treasuries to me, they seem like they're in a downtrend. I mean, long-term rates have been creeping higher and higher. I mean, if you look at the charts, I mean, uh, you know, you're certainly in a bear market, I think, right now in treasuries, or at least the, sh the intermediate-term trend has been down. This is not good news for treasuries. I, don't th I think that treasuries are going to sell off on, on, on higher rates. And, and ultimately, you know, the U.S. government is in a very precarious position because we've got the mother of all adjustable rate mortgages. We've got a $12 trillion national debt, not counting the off-budget items or the agency debt. They, they just you know, we're going to go $2 trillion more into debt in the next year, and a third of the debt comes due in, in the next year. The entire maturity on the debt is probably under three years. So as interest rates start to move up, the cost of servicing this debt goes up and up and up, just like uh, for people who had the, the teaser rates expire on their subprime mortgages. All right, Peter, thanks a lot for phoning in and providing us your analysis.